Ohio has gone from one tick of medical importance 20 years ago to five now, including two new ones in the last couple of years. We're gonna talk how to keep you, your family, and your animals tick safe on Extension Today. Extension Today is sponsored by the Ohio State University College of Food, Agricultural, and Environmental Sciences. So I'm here with my good buddy and OSU colleague, Dr. Sarah Short from the Department of Entomology. Sarah and I, we do outreach all over the state. And what I try to stress to people is the way ticks were 20 years ago is way different now. We have a number of myths that have perpetuated that we really need to bust in order to keep people tick safe. One of the myths that I hear a lot is that you can only get a tick if you're in the woods. And that's just not true. So you can certainly pick up ticks if you're in the woods, ticks like deer tick and lone star ticks, but you can also pick up ticks if you're just out in the yard, ticks like the American dog tick or Gulf Coast tick. So another myth is that you can only have ticks encountered in the summer. And while we do have heightened activity of ticks between April through September, we have positive cases of Lyme disease diagnosed from tick bites every single month of the year here in Ohio. There's a myth that you have to take a tick off in 24 hours and that's sufficient to prevent getting any sort of disease. And while it's true that it's better to get the tick off as soon as possible, 24 hours is not a magic time point. There are lots of diseases that you can get much earlier than that and we still don't know how long it takes for certain pathogens to be transferred from ticks. There's at least one study showing that Powassan virus can be transferred from a tick to a mouse in just 15 minutes. When I was back in private practice, the tick that I battled, and really the only one that we had here in Ohio causing any problems, was the American dog tick. The American dog tick would be known for Rocky Mountain spotted fever and tularemia, and that is a tick that likes a little more open habitat. Another tick that we have now is the deer tick. So the deer tick, you're likely to encounter it in the woods, but really anywhere where there's understory or, or trees or leaf litter, you could potentially pick up a deer tick. And those are most well known for transmitting Lyme disease, but they also transmit other pathogens like the ones that cause anaplasmosis and babesiosis. I'll tell you the tick that probably terrifies me the most would be the lone star tick. The lone star tick has been associated with a certain allergy there are some similarities in the saliva of the lone star tick to carbohydrates in non-primate mammalian muscle. So if you get bit and your immune system reacts negatively, you can become allergic to non-primate mammalian muscle, including beef, pork, lamb, and venison. We also can't forget about the Gulf Coast tick, which was recently introduced to the state, but we know that they are established in the southern part of the state near Cincinnati, and they also transmit multiple pathogens. So another tick is the true invasive Asian longhorn tick. That tick has me super worried because of its reproductive behavior. It can reproduce by a parthenogenesis, which means a female doesn't need a male to mate with. She can just spontaneously lay thousands of eggs. So Sarah, I wanna keep myself and my family tick safe. What are some of the things that I can do in order to prevent tick bites and tick vector disease? One of the best things that you can do is to wear permethrin treated clothing when you're out in any sort of natural environment. So you can either purchase permethrin treated clothing at the store or you can treat your own clothes. You can purchase permethrin online. The other thing that you can do is apply repellent to the skin. The EPA has a great website that has actually a search tool that you can use to look for repellents that work against ticks and mosquitoes and that have ingredients that you would like to put on your body. Another great tick protective behavior is simply awareness. The knowledge of being outside in different environments where you can encounter a tick is gonna go a long way. And then work with your veterinarian to get the best product that fits within your budget for your four-legged friends. If you have a tick that's embedded in your skin, what you wanna do is find the pointiest pair of tweezers you can find or a tick removal tool. And then you want to grasp the tick as close to the skin as possible and pull straight up without twisting. Sarah, that is awesome advice. If you want to learn how you can keep yourself, your family, and your animals tick safe, head to go.osu.edu slash extension today. Extension Today is sponsored by the Ohio State University College of Food, Agricultural, and Environmental Sciences.